Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the Bald Explorer. Today I'm in my front room, next to my fire. A lot of people have watched my videos where I've been doing stuff at home, and they've, they've commented on how lovely the fire is. And some people have actually asked, what sort of fire is it? It's obviously a wood-burning fire, a wood-burning stove, if you like. Uh, but they're curious about it. And I thought, well, the best way to explain it and answer a lot of their questions about how efficient it is, uh, how easy is it to keep, um, and the maintenance and all that sort of thing was to make a video. And so that's what I'm doing today. Um, it is a, a Clearview Pioneer 400. Now that is, there's a whole range, I think, of Clearview fires. This one just happens to suit the, uh, the fireplace that I've got here, and it does chuck out uh, a lot of heat. Um, I live in a terraced, Victorian terraced house, and when we first came here, actually, it's quite interesting because this fireplace was all covered up with plaster, and um, I think there was wood chip on it as well. I can't remember, that was so long ago. It was about 28 years ago, and we decided it was when we moved in, uh, the house is in a bit of a state. So it had this awful 1970s brick mantelpiece thing with a gas fire in that was very inefficient. And uh, we were suspected also that it leaked. So that wasn't so good. So what we decided is we would rip that out, which we did, um, and expose well, we weren't sure really what was behind this, what kind of fireplace was behind this. We thought there might be one of those beautiful ornate metal fireplaces with a small grate that you have coal in. Well, it turns out there was this whacking great hole. And then looking up, you could actually look up at the chimney and, and see daylight out the other end. Uh, pretty much. It does actually bend a bit, so you can quite see. That might be an exaggeration, but you could see the light coming down the chimney. So I thought, ah, okay, it was cold, it was winter when we were moving in, funnily enough. Um, well, I say that, it was October, November time, it was cold. And uh, we decided we would buy a grate, which we did, and we filled it up with logs, we got it all going, and it was a lovely fire in there, but we were still freezing cold. The, f the heat was going straight up the chimney, which was very irritating. So we, we, we wrestled about with this. In fact, we put uh, somebody said, oh, you need a, a piece of metal at the back here to radiate the heat into the room. We tried that, but it still didn't really work very effectively. We loved the fact that you could see the fire, but we just wanted to feel the heat much more. So in the end, what we decided then to do is to try and get a wood-burning stove. We didn't have a lot of money and wood-burning stoves can be quite expensive. So we ended up going to a place and we got this pot belly and it was a sort of budget fire. Pot belly fire, it took about three days to run in. You could fill it with coal, very, very small, like that, and let it run for a you know, few hours. Then the next day you'd do the same. And on the third day, we were allowed to fill it up with coal. Well, we did. We filled it up so much, the whole thing glowed. And the heat was so much, we had to open the windows and open the back door, try and dissipate the heat. It was about eight kilowatts of uh, heat that was radiating. We couldn't sit in the room. It was, uh, it was very funny, but we learned how it worked. We were burning coal because when we moved in, there was a coal bunker in the house. Well, those days are long gone. And this thing, after about five years, packed up some of the internal um, Iron work started to crumble in the grate in there and because it was a cheap thing you couldn't get in and replace anything. So we've had a couple of uh, fires since then. Um, the last one um, we couldn't get the fire bricks for it and it became a bit redundant and the door sort of had problems. So last year I bought this Clearview Pioneer 400 and it fits this little space beautifully uh, now, when you, uh, you know, if you've got one, you'll know all about this, but it's advisable to have a pipe on the inside of the chimney or, or a liner, as they call it, so that you're double protected. Well, we didn't for many, many years because these houses, being Victorian, were built with the chimneys to be used. 
and they have been used and they and you know unless you burn your wood uh, unseasoned wood or you burn the wrong stuff you you could have problems but if you don't do that you generally we never had any problems well i don't uh, intend to teach you how to suck eggs in this video a lot of people know how uh, wood burning stoves works and, and all that sort of stuff so i don't want to give you too much of uh, what you already know um, and tell you more about this particular unit and i've only as i say i've only had it a year uh, but so far i can tell you it seems to be incredibly economic once you've got it um, i can't remember exactly how much it costs it was about 800 pounds something like that um, the couple of important things when you get one it's advisable to have a flue uh, within the chimney now i've got one um, here and when they provided this bit of the chimney you'll see that this is discolored here and it's got this weird purple color well when it came it was very strange they said um, we don't provide them in black anymore it's just a piece of steel and you can spray it and they gave me a tin of spray and I, well, when I put it in, it was cold and I wanted to get the thing going quickly as possible. I couldn't be asked to wait for <laughs> the spraying and do it. So I just shoved it on there on the basis that I would do it later. But actually I quite like that discoloration. So that, that's worked out quite well. In terms of the fire itself, um, it's a smallish grate, uh, but you can get reasonable sized lumps of wood in, you know, smallish ones to get it going. Uh, obviously your kindling, you get your kindling in there and get it all going. Uh, and then there's biggish lumps. I mean, if I hold that against my head and they do last reasonably well. Talk about that in a moment. Once you've got the kindling in and you've got the fire going, obviously you've opened up all your valves, as it were, your airflow valves. Uh, so you've got one at the bottom and then there's one just underneath the door. I know that some people will have some form of regulator in their chimney. They can reduce the flow in the chimney. I don't have that on this one. I don't feel I need it. Once you've got it going, you close up the bottom piece um, and you can regulate the fire uh, with the, this little control underneath the door, which stops the amount of air coming in because mostly it's done by the air coming down the chimney and it's taking it also up the chimney. Um, and it is quite amazing actually. I mean, I think one of the key things is that you get it going and you warm up the room. It also here, it warms up my bricks uh, and it warms up the other bricks in the other part of the room. And after about an hour or so, the whole room is radiating with heat. I open up the door, but you can turn it right down almost to where it's almost just embers and it's burning incredibly slowly and that will maintain the heat in the room which is fantastic and I love that. You could put a kettle on the top here if you wanted if you wanted to uh, have a, a you know cup of tea throughout the day whatever. I've also got one of these this I believe is a thermal fan and the idea of this is as this heats up to about I don't know what it is 170 degrees something like that uh, the heat generated off the top of the, f the fire or the stove starts to turn the fan and this there's no batteries or anything like that it's all it all comes in its own thing you put it at the back of the fire and it pushes the heat out not in a massive way not in a way like having a, a fan you know like a one of these electric fans just enough because the heat can often just sort of sit around here and it just gently wafts it out but it does make a big difference the other thing I should just show for those people who don't know anything about um, fires, this is a, a chimney plate. So this is a piece of metal that sits in the chimney about here underneath. The chimney, obviously, the flue goes up through there. So that blocks the rest of the chimney so that uh, the heat doesn't dissipate up the chimney like I had with the grate. So it can hang about here. Now, I've already got one in here, but it's... Um, it's a bit dilapidated now so at the end of this winter period I will change that um, and put this new one in and then that will probably last me another 20 odd years or, or more. Um, as far as cleaning the chimney goes I usually clean it about once every two years something like that. Um, I don't overly I mean it's this one only gets used pretty much in the winter on very very cold days in the the rest of the year but mostly just during the winter so i'm not using it as much as i use my se which is in the kitchen so 
um, I don't need to clean it but you could you know shove a brush up there I do it myself so I just shove a brush up there and bring it down it's it's not too much problem it's a lovely thing I love it very much and it's perfectly safe the handle gets hot so advisably use a glove um, and the great thing it's clear view and you have this glass screen so that you can see the fire and and you know going back to the original great that's what I wanted to see and it's just lovely um, I'm not paid to say any of this but people have asked me about the fire and I just thought I'd show you there's plenty of other options out there and I'm sure they're just as good but um, the, it's it's just a different way of doing it obviously I've got a, a bit of tiling down here where the grate is um, so you know it uh, seems to be perfectly safe anyway I hope you've enjoyed this video very simple just wanted to show you. it was a bit of a miserable day I couldn't get out and do any exploring as I would normally do so uh, I'm gonna sit here by the fire and keep warm don't forget to follow like and subscribe leave a comment if you've got one there's probably loads of things I've missed out about fires and there may be well people who are, are far more experienced than me so do let me know in the meantime if you've enjoyed it thumbs up that would be great and I will see you on the next one hopefully out and about in the landscape exploring our heritage the landscape and nature till next time bye 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 <laughs>